than when our children go out into the world as ambassadors of peace. But if they don't learn peace at home, they will go out into the world angry and upset at themselves and everyone else. Wouldn't it be wonderful if all of us took the message of Christmas and made it a permanent part of our lives and put it into practice all year long? Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could take the message of Christmas everywhere we went? But we're being told that you can't mix church and state that somehow you've got to put your religion in a box and take it out only on Sunday morning or Easter or Christmas. You're not supposed to pray in school. You're not supposed to talk about God at work. But wouldn't it be wonderful if we could take Christ into the marketplace, into the workplace, to school, wherever we might go, and not leave him lying in the manger. What a difference he would make in our world. And I thought about the people who are saying, you know, just become a Christian. Then God will take care of everything for you. No more problems. You don't have to be concerned about anything because God will make you healthy and wealthy from that day on. And some people make that the foundation of their faith. And when it doesn't happen to them, they lose their faith. God never promised that life would be easy, only that he would be there to help us through the difficult times. He didn't promise it would be easy for Mary and Joseph sometime after Christmas because then came the wise men, and that was exciting. But soon came a time of hardship for Mary and Joseph because they had to flee to Egypt. And the scripture tells us that the Magi had gone when it had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said, take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt and stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up and took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And as we read the story, we know that when Herod realized he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious, and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and in the vicinity who were two years old. We know that scripture tells us that when they were finally able to go back home to Nazareth, life for them was not a bed of roses. I'm sure that they had to work, pay bills, buy food, and go through the dreariness of everyday life. They must have at times been worried and anxious and even maybe afraid at times. God never promised them a life without problems. In fact, along the way, Joseph drops out of the picture. And we don't know what happened to him. We don't know how or when he died. But somewhere along the line, Mary realized herself without a husband, without a father at home to care for the children. Life wasn't easy. I wonder if sometimes she felt that maybe God had forgotten about them. But how about us? We have our problems. We've shed our tears. We've been touched by death and illness and hardships. 
We have faced a strange time this past year. But with Jesus in our lives, one thing that makes the difference is that he gives us a solid foundation, the strength to carry on and even to overcome. So the real work of Christmas is just now starting. Christmas is not over. You may have taken down your Christmas tree and put the decorations back in storage for next year. And if you have, that's okay. But we remember again the true meaning of Christmas. God gave himself for us. He was born as one of us that each of us might be born again into the family of God. That baby born in Bethlehem some 2,000 plus years ago is the savior of every one of us. So I want to leave you with this thought. I wonder what you are going to do with Christmas. Now that Christmas day is over for another year. Will you put it in a box until next Christmas? Will you leave baby Jesus in the manger? Or will you take the peace and the goodwill with you this new year? Amen. That is the, oops, sorry. That is the fun part at working at a church. You can talk about Jesus all day long, and we do. And we pray for one another often. We have people that come and need help at the church. Um, maybe they need prayer. Maybe they need financial help. And it's always a joy because Christmas is all year long. So that is a joy for us who work at the church. And in saying that, even communion is a gift. What Jesus did for us, no one else would ever do. So we do thank Jesus for this gift that we're about to receive. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took the bread. And he said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was over, Jesus took the cup. gave thanks and gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you, in the remembrance of the new covenant, my blood that has been given for you. And it was poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving 
as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Please join me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. So now, as we partake of the elements, the sacred elements, let's remember Christ as we are taking these gifts. And as you've heard me say, the body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. for joining me in having communion together. And now we will have our closing hymn, The Gift of Love. <clears throat> Oh. 
resounding press and hopeless gain. Though I may give all I possess and striving so. I pray as you leave this sanctuary this morning that you will not forget Christmas Day is past, but Christmas is not over. Go in God's love and his peace. Amen. Amen.